When you're writing in plain text and converting your documents into other formats, sometimes you need a text editor that does a little bit more than just capture your words. Hi everyone! In this video I'm going to show you how to use an application called Sublime Text. First we'll go through installation, and then I'll show you how to create what's called a build in order to convert a plain text document into a Microsoft Word document. Now before we start there are just two caveats I want to point out. The first is that in order to convert a document from a text document to a Word document, you need to have another program installed on your computer. That program is called Pandoc, and I've actually done a video on Pandoc, and you can look at it uh, up here. The second thing is that Sublime Text is a very, uh, not complex, but highly customizable program, and you can really sink your teeth into it. I'm just going to give you the basics here. If it's this video like gets you interested and you want to learn more about it, I'll put another link up here in the corner to a series of videos that really helped me get started. And then the other thing that I'll do is in the future I'll do uh, other videos on uh, Sublime Text with other tips and tricks. All right, so with all of that in mind, let's get started. You can see that I have a Firefox browser window open, and the first thing I'll do is go to the Sublime Text website. Once I'm there, I'll click on Download. And I'll download the latest version for Mac OS. If you're using a Windows machine, of course you should download Windows. I'll select Save. And once that's done, I'll go to my Downloads folder and open the DMG file. The next step is to drag the Sublime Text icon from here to your Applications folder. Now I'm not actually going to do that because I already have the application installed on my computer, but you get the idea. This is how you would install it. So that's it for installation. Let's close these windows. And I'll also get rid of the installer on my desktop. Okay, now let's open Sublime Text. And actually, let me give you a sample text document so you have an idea of what it might look like before you convert it to a Word document. Now you can see that when I was fiddling with the document there, the background color changed from black to white and then back to black and that there's also special color highlighting for the syntax, the markdown syntax that I'm using. For now, I don't want you to worry about this. We'll go over it in a future video. Let's just focus on turning this plain text document into a Word document. Now it's important to understand that Sublime Text was originally designed for programmers, and when you're a programmer, there's sort of two steps to your work. First you write your code, and then you build your code, or you run your code. And it's the same thing when you're working in plain text. First you write your text, and then you create a build that will convert that text into the format you want. So let's look at the builds. First I'll go to Tools, and then I'll select Build System. And you can see here in the middle of the list that's just opened, I have several build systems for converting plain text into different formats. I have one for Word, and that's in Chicago format. I have one for Word that's in APA format. And then I have one for LaTeX and for creating PDFs. Let me show you how I did that. So from Build System, I would go all the way down to New Build System. And what I want you to do is hit Control all to select all the text, then just delete it, and I'm going to paste in the following text. Now when I zoom in, you'll see that there's a lot of stuff here that's familiar. That is, you'll see a lot of the same commands that I reviewed in my Pandoc video. But there are a few differences here, so let me go over them. First, I want you to just note that all of the text here is surrounded by curly braces. Next, notice that all the little bits of text here are enclosed in quotation marks. And finally, as you can see, Almost all the lines here end with commas. So when you put together your build file, just make sure all this syntax is correct. Okay, so then let's go over everything. First you'll see I have selector, then a colon, and then text.html.markdown. Honestly, I have no idea what this means, but you'll just want to include it. Just trust me. Next I have cmd or command in a colon, and that simply means I want you to run the following terminal command. Again, notice that the whole terminal command that follows is enclosed in square brackets. Now the first line of the command is just calling pandoc, but in contrast to the way we call pandoc when we're actually writing in the terminal, I need to give the whole file path. And if you installed pandoc like I showed in my last video, I'll bet you dollars to donuts this is the file path. After that I have dash f and markdown, which means from markdown. Then I have dash t followed by docx, so to docx, to Microsoft Word. Dash s means standalone. Then we have some formatting commands. Dash dash smart helps with extra spaces and other formatting issues, and normalize helps with quotation marks, dashes, that sort of thing. Next we have dash dash filter, and this is where I'm telling Pandoc there are citations in the text, 
and I want you to process them using the program called pandoc-siteproc. Actually, I don't know if it's siteproc or siteproc. It doesn't matter. Now, in the same way where we called pandoc at the beginning of this command, where we had to give the whole file path, here, again, you need to give the whole file path. And I'm sure this will be your file path as well. Next, we have dash dash bibliography. And that tells pandoc, when you encounter a citation in the text, go to the following bib file to find all of the metadata. And here, I've included the name of the bib file and the whole file path. So pandoc always knows where to look for it. Dash o means output a file. And then in the following line, I have the file path for that new file. As you can see, I have it outputting to the desktop. But let me just go over one little thing here. For the file name, you can see that I have dollar sign, file base name, separated by underscores, dot docx. I'm simply saying, whatever the name of the original text file I sent to you, I want the docx file to have the same name. And then the last line, dollar sign file, is just the name of the text file that I'm passing to pandoc. So now that we have the build written, let's save it. So I'll hit Command S for save. And when you type in the name, make sure that you do not delete the second part of this file name, the dot sublime build. I'll give it a name that's easy to remember. And then I'll hit Enter. And then I can close this window. If I go to Tools, then Build System, you can see that Demo now appears at the top, and I'll select it. And once your build selected, all you need to do is hit Command B in order to build the document. So when I hit Command B, this text document will be converted into a Word document. Let's give it a try. So you can see in the output window at the bottom that the operation is finished. And if I hide this window and go to the desktop, you can see that there's a new Word document there. Let's open it and take a look. And there you go. Here's my final Word document. You can see that everything is formatted beautifully. I have a title. I have section headings. And if I go all the way to the end, the citations in the document have been converted into a list of references. And this is just a final demonstration of how great it is to work in plain text. When I'm working in plain text, all I need to focus on is the writing. I don't need to worry about the formatting. Then, if I'm working in Sublime Text, and once I've set up my build, all I need to do is hit Command B, and by the time it gets to Word, everything is beautifully formatted, and all my citations and my list of references has been generated. So thanks for watching this video. Be sure to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any new videos. All you need to do is click right here on the left. Make sure to follow me on Twitter at Dr. Nerdis. The address is down here below. And there are plenty more videos on writing academic papers in plain text. Thanks again.